Well, we're going back to Romans chapter 13. We're uh, kind of winding down here. We have one more week. Um, and uh, actually, I was, Sean was supposed to teach this session tonight, and I was going to be doing the teaching next week, um, but he couldn't make it tonight. So we switched, and I'm actually really blessed because I love, I love, I love this section of Romans 13. Um, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. And, and I'm just going to read through the verses. We're going to look at Romans 13, 11 through 13. I know uh, uh, next week we'll be closing out with the, the final verse and then the summary of what we looked here in Transform Living. But Romans 13, 11 through 13 says, Do this, knowing the time, that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. For now, salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. The night is almost gone, and the day is near. Therefore, let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us, not behave, prop let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy. Um, in the chapters what we've been looking in this class, um, Transform Living, we've been looking at chapters 12 and 13. And first thing we saw in the first two verses is why. Why do we want to do this? And basically, this section of Romans starts out after after the first 11 chapters of Romans. So it, it kind of goes to, the, the point is, is look at what has been done in Christ Jesus and the redemption and the justification and the things that have been accomplished in Christ Jesus. And then it starts out, therefore, be living sacrifices and be transformed by renewing your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. It gives us the why. Because of what Jesus Christ has accomplished we are to change. We are to transform our lives. And then the majority of the verses we've been looking at up until right now is the how. How do we live? How are we to live now that we have this knowledge? How are we to transform? And that's what we've looked at these past weeks of how one is to live in this transformed living. And I feel like these verses tonight are not really telling us why, and they're not really telling us how, I think it's telling us when. When is it time to transform? When is it time to do this? Right? When? Um, and it says, do this, knowing the time. We're talking about time. And time continues on. It's already the hour. Now. Now. It's the hour to awaken from sleep. Wake up. Right? It's now is the time to awaken from sleep. For now, now, salvation is nearer to us than when we believed. We are one day closer. Every day the clock ticks. Every day the days, the calendar changes. We're one day closer to the return of Jesus Christ. We are one day closer to that day. The night is almost gone. It's almost gone. The day is near. Now is the time. And I got to tell you tonight, to me, this is not, this is a preaching topic. So if I get a little excited, because this is the time. It's the time to stop messing around and not say I should love and not say I should do these things that we talked about. It's to do them. Not tomorrow. Not when I feel like it. Now. Now, because Jesus Christ is coming back. So when you're going to transform, when are you going to make up your mind that now is the time for me to live for God in the way that he said it? And that's kind of, when I read this, that's my encouragement here. 
Now is the night is almost gone, the day is near. The hour has come to wake out of sleep. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. You see, this day, this day that's drawing near has been anticipated since God first set forth the plan of salvation. This day of salvation, when we are going to receive all that has been made available in Christ Jesus, has been talked about probably in every book of the Bible. I don't know if it's in uh, Song of Solomon, but just about every book. This anticipation of what God is going to do and what he has promised is coming and it's near. This idea that the day is near is not a new thing. It was, it's been heralded by the prophets. I saw this when we did the book on the 12 I was going through, so I pulled up my slides. These are from this class. Look at what some of the prophets said about what's coming. Joel 2.1, blow a trumpet <laughs> in Zion and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Surely it's near. It's coming. The day of the Lord is coming. Obadiah 1.15, for the day of the Lord the day of the Lord draws near on all the nations. Last week we talked about the nations, and you know, some nations, you wonder, it's a little chaos. Guess what? There's a day coming. It's all going to get straightened out. Jesus Christ is coming back. Micah 1 3, behold, the Lord is coming forth from his place, and he will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. Zephaniah 1 14, near. Near is the great day of Yahweh. Near and coming very quickly. This is what the prophet said. The day is coming. The day is coming. Malachi 4.1. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff. I don't want to be in the chaff category. Know what I'm saying? He's coming. Zechariah 14.1, Behold, a day is coming from the Lord. This is the message of Jesus. Look at Matthew 4. I mean, I could go to a lot of places, but just look at this. One of the first things that Jesus said as he started his ministry, after he was baptized, after he had been tempted of the devil's 40 days, he comes out from these temptations, and he goes in the area of region of Galilee, and in Matthew 4, verse 17, from that time, from that time, Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach. He preached, and he said, repent, change, or if we want to go with the, the terminology of this class, transform, repent, change, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is near. It's coming. It's coming. So change. Transform. The book of Acts, I've been reading the book of Acts in my own personal reading lately. I mean, it, the book of Acts is all about this. I get the idea after Jesus ascended into heaven and they'd seen him resurrected from the dead, they were expecting, we're right around the corner, Right? I don't think that those guys were looking and said, it's going to be another 2,000 years uh, before the Lord comes back. I think they're, they're, you read the book of Acts, they were saying, look, it, it's time to change because what the prophet said, just Jesus is that one that they talked about and he is coming back. So it's time to get on board with truth. And the time is now. It's not time to wait. It's not time to sit around and and get conformed to this world and be involved with, and get all in change, transform, because Jesus Christ is coming back. You know, do you want to be kicking your sister and punching her when Jesus Christ comes back? <laughs> <laughs> to, go off, <laughs> to, go off, to go off what Shelby just said. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? 
This kind of keeps us in line. What do we want to be like when Jesus Christ comes back, right? What is, what, how do we want to be seen by our Lord when he comes back? I'd love to be preaching, right? Wouldn't that be great? You know, I don't know, what, I don't know the times. No man knows the hour he's coming, but we know he's coming. And the day is near, and that's why we are to wake from sleep and begin to live for him. And if you will let me kind of go off a little bit into my preaching, go to 2 Kings. Because when I think about waking up and no longer sitting around, I go back to this record. I heard this record as a very young Christian. And um, we're going to go to 2 Kings. And it just, it's just some simple people. And when I heard this preached, the first time I heard this particular teaching, as a young man, I thought to myself, man, I can do this. If these guys can be like that, I, I can do this. I can live this way. I can transform. I can change. If I just get up and begin moving and begin doing what God says to do. And this is the record that I think of on that. If we go to 2 Kings we're going to pick up to get a little background in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 24. This is in the northern kingdom of Israel. Samaria is the capital city. Samaria is where uh, the, the main city of the northern kingdom is where the king lives. It's the main city of the northern kingdom of Israel, right? Elisha is the prophet at this time. And in verse 24, it says, Now it came about after this that Ben-Hadad, this is the king of Aram, or it's also in, in King James, we'll say Syria, Aram gathered all his army and went up and they besieged Samaria. When an army of the old, that was, this, is a, this is actually a technique for defeating walled cities on mountains as you go up and you surround it so that nobody can go in or out and you starve the city out. Right? You besiege it so people can't go in and out. They can't get in and out. And after a while, they run out of food. It's part of a military strategy. And that's what Ben Hadad is doing. He has besieged Samaria. And behold, they besieged it. And they did it until a donkey's head was sold for eight shekels of silver and a fourth of a cab of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. I've heard different things about what they say. I don't know what they are. I don't know what a, a cab of dove's dung is, but it doesn't sound like it's something too desirable. <laughs> and they were paying five shekels of silver for this. All right, so the situation was pretty, pretty grim. And it goes on. As the king was passing, verse 26, by on the wall, a woman cried unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. He said, If Yahweh does not help you, from whence shall I help you? From the threshing floor, the wine press, we don't got any wine. We don't got any food. What am I supposed to do? And the king said to her, what is the matter with you? And she said, this woman said to me, give your son that we may eat him today. And we will eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I gave to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Now, this is... This is really dire times. I, don't, I, I still can't fathom this. You know, I, I kind of get the idea that maybe both the children had died. That's, you know, that's the only way I could even fathom that you, know, you would deal with cannibalism in this way. And even that's pretty sick. But this is, how, this is how bad the situation was. There's no food. And people will do crazy, crazy things when there's no food. When the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. Now he's passing by on the wall, and the people looked, and he had sackcloth beneath his body. He said, may God do so to me also if the head of Elijah, the son of Shaphat, remains on him today. 
So he goes to get Elijah because he's blaming this on Elijah rather than on his own sin and idolatry that he had brought into Samaria. He was, a, he was blaming the prophet who was telling him to change. Anyways, Elisha gets out of this. And then in verse 7, Elijah, chapter 7, verse 1, Elijah said, listen to the word of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh, tomorrow about this time, tomorrow, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel. Whoa, tomorrow? That's going to happen tomorrow? Right now they're doing a donkey's dong for five shekels, right? And you're saying tomorrow we're going to have barley for a shekel? And uh, the royal officer on whose hand the king was leaning answered the man of God and said, Behold, if Yahweh could make windows of heaven, could this thing be? And Elisha says to him, he said, Behold, you will see it with your eyes, but you will not eat of it. So, now, we really get to this part of the story I want to get to. How's God going to bring this to pass? Who's he going to use for his work? To work his work for him. Verse 3. Now there were four leprous men. Lepers! He's going to work with four lepers? Lepers. Lepers lived outside the city. Four leprous men, okay? Four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why sit here until we die? Why sit here until we die? If we say, we will enter the city, we're going to go into Samaria. The famine's in the city. And we will die. If we go into the city, even though lepers aren't supposed to go into the city, but if we go into the city, there's a famine there, and we're going to die. And if we sit here, we're going to die. <laughs> now, therefore, come. Let us go over to the camp of the Arameans. Let's go to the enemy, right? Let's go to their camp. They've surrounded the city. Let's go into the army of the enemy. If they spare us, we will live. But if they kill us, we will but die. <laughs> I love that. If you and I do nothing, we're going to die. And the Lord's coming back. If we choose to conform to this world and live by the world's standards, we're going to die. And if we choose to live this way and to transform our lives and to walk the way that, that the Apostle Paul was inspired by his Lord Jesus to write to us, and we live this way with love, and we live this way, the way that we've seen not to, be, not to conform to this world, but live above this world. If we live this way, you know what? There's no promise that your life's going to be pretty. There's no promise that you're not going to get a little persecution. There's no promise that, that you know, everything's just going to be rosy and beautiful. There's no promise that, that you know, you're not going to get laughed at, that you're going to lose family, that you're going to lose friends. There's no promises about that, you know, you're going to have these beautiful things. And you know what? You may live this way, and you know what? You might die. But a day is drawing near. The day is drawing near, and it's drawing near, and we, can, and we are going to live in the resurrection. And you know what? Even if the whole thing is just a bunch of baloney, we're just going to die, right? What do you got to lose? What do you got to lose to get up and transform your life and begin walking this way? We got nothing to lose and everything. We got eternal life to gain and all the rewards and all the benefits and everything that's going to happen that Jesus said will happen at that time when that day comes. So you follow the story. So they arose at twilight, verse 5, to go to the camp of the Armenians. And when they came out, skirts of the camp of the Armenians, behold, there was no one there. They went into the enemy's camp, and there's nobody there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Armenians to hear a sound of chariots and a sound of horses 
even the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Therefore they arose, fled at twilight, left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp just as it was, and they fled for their lives. They left everything there in the camp. And these four leprous guys just walk in and say, Hey, look at this. And when the lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent. Hey, food, and they ate. <laughs> this is pretty good. And they drank, and they carried there from silver. They got silver and gold and clothes. This is pretty good. And they went and hid them. And then they returned, they entered another tent. <laughs> this is a pretty good gig we got here. And they carried from there also and went there and hid them. And then they said to another, we're, we're, we're not doing right. <laughs> This day is a day of good news, but we are keeping silent. If we wait until morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. And you follow the record. They go and they yell at the gate saying, hey, there's nobody in the Armenian camp. <laughs> yeah, they yell at the guys at the wall. They're like, what? And they go check it out, and they're right. And they go and they take all the spoil from the Armenian camp. They take all the spoil and bring it back into the city of Samaria and verse 15, they went after them to Jordan, and behold, all the way was full of clothes and equipment which the Armenians had thrown away in their haste. Then the messengers returned and told the king, so the people went out and plundered the camp of the Armenians, six, verse 16, that a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of Yahweh. A day later, and then the people in there, they trampled the guy who said it's not going to happen. He dies. So he saw it happen, but he didn't get to eat of it, which is what Elijah said would happen. But I love that. Why sit we here until we die? Let's get up and begin living the way that we have been told, to let our lives transform, to allow God to transform us. In the calling of which we're called, remember we talked about the spiritual gifts, the things that God has enabled us with. Let's get busy doing Let's get busy doing. When? Now. You know, it's like, oh, we're in COVID season. We can't do anything. When COVID's over, then we could start doing it. No. Matter of fact, I've been blessed watching the church. We've had a lot of new people come during this time. That's cool. That's good. Get out and preach. Get out and teach. Get out and reach out to people and say, you know what? Because you know what? You're going to die. One of these days, we're all going to die. But Jesus Christ is coming back, and in there, we have eternal life. So, you know, uh, you know and, and you get the excuses. I'm, I'm too young. I just, you know, I don't know anything. You think the leprous guys knew anything? You know, I, I don't know anything. I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this enough. I'm not that enough. I, 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 I. Or I can sometimes be uh, tempted and, and now say, you know, I'm getting too old for this. You know, it's time for me to retire, time for me to kind of just hang out and just you know, relax into the sunset. And, and just, you know, I'll just fade away. And uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to just sit around. I want to transform, continually transform and continually to move forward because the day is coming. The day is near. Look at Ephesians 5. Um, I also think of when I think of this, uh, you know the record of Esther and um, Mordecai uh, says to her, he says to her, who knows, Esther, whether you have not attained royalty for a time such as this. Why are you working where you work right now? Why are you living where you live right now? Why are you involved in the things that you are involved? Is it, is it just by mistake? Or does God have a purpose for you right now in your situation, in your life, to begin to move? To live for him in your situation now. Oh, when I get settled in an, at, a, at, a, at a get a home, once I get out of debt, once, it's time now. It's time now. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. 
And then I love Esther's response. She said, I'll go to the king. It's not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. If I die, I die. But see, we, we continue to move and we continue to walk this way, even though it's contrary to the world and to the, to the currents of the world and the modes of the world. It's contrary living. But so what? Jesus kind of walked contrary to the world, right? And we are his disciples. And he said, die to self. He said, take up your cross and follow me. If you're not willing to give up everything you have, you can't be my disciple. Those are strong words. You know, that we are to die to self and begin to live for him and transform, not to be conformed and walk for him. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, chapter 5, and let's start in verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. Don't partake into the world's form of disobedience and the, the fads of this world and the, and the conform to the things of this world. For you were formerly darkness. Before we knew Christ, we were in darkness. But now, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light comes in goodness and righteousness and truth. Trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead expose them. Let your light expose them. For it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light. Everything that comes visible is light. For this reason it says, Awake! Wake up, sleeper! Awake, sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. Make the most of your time. Don't just waste away. Don't just let the world to, to, to pull you in this direction and pull you in that direction and just... You know, look, when Shelby, Jesus actually got up and went away to a private place and got himself together with God. You know, he spent time, he did what he needed to do, doing the most of the time that he had. And, you know, that's what we got. You know, I, I don't have, you know, maybe I don't have money. Maybe, you know what, I, I still got time. Let's see, <gasps> I'm still alive, right? As long as you're still alive, you still got time. You still got time. Today, now, to live for him. I love this use of uh, uh, that we are children of light, we are children of day. You can go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, we're going to go to. Um, the use of day. Um, I, I think it's a figurative use, but I like the understanding of it. Um, like, I think we've seen... Uh, recently in, in our country with the, um, the protests and, and everything going on in the riots, if you notice a lot of cities, what they do is they, sh they put the curfews at dark, right? They say you can, you, know, you can protest, but at dark you need to, we're putting a curfew because believe it or not, most things that are bad happen at night. There's not a lot of good things that happen after midnight, if you haven't noticed. A lot of the times when people sin and they get into drunkenness and they get into rioting and they get into wantonness and they get into uh, things that they shouldn't be doing, a lot of times it happens at night, after dark. And I think this is a figurative way to say that, although I think it's literally true too, you know, get up in the morning and go to bed at night. That's a, it's not a bad way to live. It's not actually a, it's a pretty good thing, you know. Uh, go to bed at night. That's ah, a good thing. And then get up with the sun, right? 
Um, it's not a bad way to live. But I think it's figurative. But that's the understanding of it. You know, that the, the curfews come because rioting, looting, carousing, drunkenness, sexual promiscuity, strife, most often happens at night. But we're to put off the works of darkness. Again, I think this is a big metaphor. We're to put off the works of darkness, and we are to live as children of the day. We are not of the night. We are children of the day. We are the light of the world. And we walk as children of light. And then it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, it continues on with this same verse five, chapter 5, verse 1. I love this. Now, as to the times and epochs, he just got done saying Jesus Christ is coming back in the chapter before. He's going to raise the dead. There's going to be a trumpet. Dead in Christ will rise. Woo! And now he says in verse chapter 5, now, as to the times and the epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. You don't need to know the exact details of when it's going to happen and when it's going to go down. All you need to know is it's going to happen. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. You know what? A thief in the night. That's how I lost my radio in my car when I lived in Peoria, Illinois. I walked out one morning. You know, the radio was there. It was a nice one with it. At that time, it was a, a cassette tape player, right? Okay. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was there. But I didn't, I never locked my doors. And my, so I got in the morning, and, I went, and my door was open. It's like, did I not shut, you know, you guys, did I not shut the door? And I opened, opened my car door, and I looked, and there's a big hole where my radio was. <laughs> A thief in the night, man, just whoop, came and swiped away my radio. And it happened over the nighttime while I was sleeping. And he just came. And it says that the day of the Lord, for those who are living in darkness, for those who are not conform, who are conforming to this world and not transforming, not living as children of light, that day is going to come. And it's going to come for those that are in darkness like a thief like a thief in the night. While they say peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them like labor pains upon a woman with child and they will not escape. It's like when that woman is about to have that baby and that baby's coming out. And you know what? That baby's coming out. And you can't stop it at that point. Once they get to that time where that baby's ready, you know, they crown and whoop, that baby's coming out. And you can't stop it from happening. Jesus Christ is coming back. And it cannot be stopped. And when this goes down, it's going to happen. The day is near. We are to walk as children of light. But you, brethren, verse 4, are not in darkness that that day, that that day would overtake you like a thief. For you are sons of light and sons of day. We are not of dark night or of darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. For those who sleep, do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk in the night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not obtained us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that we are awake, so that we are awake or asleep. We will live together with him. If we, if we live for him, and we live for him, and we live for him, and he still hasn't come back, but we take our last breath, we will die. But we will live again together with him because he's going to raise us from the dead. So what are we waiting for? Right? Wake up. That's the admonition here at the end of these verses and the closing verses here. Wake up, for the day is near. The time to transform is now. Amen? Amen? All right, next week we'll finish up Transform Living. Woo! Go!